call the Kitty Hawk Town Council to order this Monday, October 5th, 2015 at Kitty Hawk Town Hall. It is now 6 p.m. We have a few folks joining us tonight. And those folks that are looking at us on the tube, we appreciate all your attention. Thanks for paying attention to local government. Would you join all of us with a moment of silence? Pledge of Allegiance. to approve the agenda. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We have some introductions and presentations. Uh, police officer, would you do the honors, please? Council, um, Bob, come on up there. Dan Heim, um, five-year plaque, he's been with us for five years. He started his law enforcement career here. Uh, he's told me he wants to end it here, um, and I owe this deal, and that's going to happen. Um, Dan is originally from um, Ohio, uh, where is it? Oh. <laughs> Albany, New York. I always get out of New York. He has an associate's degree in criminal justice. He's a U.S. Army uh, combat veteran, um, and after the Army, he completed his uh, education, got his two-year degree, and moved to this area, um, went to the basic law enforcement training at the College of Albemarle in Elizabeth City, and we uh, picked him up. Great guy, does an awesome job, um, and uh, just can't give him enough compliments, and uh, glad, he's, glad, he's, glad he's with us. He's a good man. And we're glad to have you. Thank you for serving. Thank you. Congratulations, Dan. Next, we have public comment. Lynn, do we have anybody signed up? Yes. Does anyone out there want to speak at this public comment? No? Let the record show no one came forward. Consent agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Consent agenda is approved. There, were not, there was nothing removed. Planning. We have a call for public hearing, a conditional use permit, an application for to allow medical offices in an existing building. There's already one in there, uh, a dentist in there. Now we're going to get surf pediatrics, I understand. Uh, they're moving across the street. Do I hear a motion to call for public hearing? Motion to call for public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right. Mr. May, did y'all set it for a specific time and date? Oh. <laughs> uh, well, that's what confused me there. It is here. All right. It's right here. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, who did that? Craig, you did it. Yeah. Craig, you did it. All right. Uh, moved to set a public hearing at Tyne Council meeting on October 5th, 2015, and that is the wrong date because that's wrong today. Wrong date. <laughs> today, yeah. Well, I thought it was going to be a short meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so the next council Can meeting. we start over? <laughs> Second. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I'll... Uh, Make another motion. <laughs> <laughs> Move to set a public hearing the time council meeting on November 2nd, 2015 to consider a conditional use permit application to allow medical offices clinics at 5107 North Crow 10 Highway. I'll right. second that one. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Opposed? We now have a proper hearing call. You almost had me thinking that I had missed calling it and we were in it there for a second. I had to stop. Okay. 
Next, we have a permit fee reduction request. Um, was anybody going to take this for the benefit of the? You're going to do that? Yeah. Okay. So that the public <coughs> knows what we're doing here. Sorry about the, uh, the typo on the public hearing request. There. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Recently, the uh, the Beach Food Pantry purchased the Max's Real Bagels property, and they're planning to do some renovation work and move their operation into that building. Uh, they've asked as a uh, 301C3 nonprofit organization if we. Uh, reduce permit fees or waive fees for them and as I've been told administratively our department didn't have the authority to do that but they were welcome to make a request of town council um, and going over the plans um, that we have it looks like the building permit fees would be right around the $500 range um, and I guess with that I can I'll turn it over and answer any questions I have I believe somebody is planning to coming out but Okay. All right. So basically, we're being asked to waive the fee because it's a uh, uh, 501 uh, charity type thing. Right. And uh, the only question that I had personally, and I did talk to the uh, legal about it, was the fact that we've done it for storms. We do it routinely for storms, and we certainly, I want to do it for this. I don't want to set a precedence for a whole bunch of stuff like this to come in. On the other hand, how often would we get something of this nature? So I'm okay with it. So um, uh, my opinion on it is there are a lot of uh, a lot of nonprofits. That's correct. Right. Uh, and some of them are issue oriented and all of that kind of thing. As long as we, uh, 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 and I'm in favor of this as well. I feel like as long as the nonprofit is actually out there helping the needy in the community and doing that kind of work, and it seems to me in reading through uh, what we have here that they're mainly uh, supported by volunteers, and so we're not talking about some high-paid staff that is uh, uh, running this nonprofit. And what I would like to know is, can we exercise that kind of discretion in uh, waiving these permits? <coughs> you can. We can. So if we can, then I think that we can, in effect, give that rationale, and we can take one as they come in and make make our decision based on what their uh, what their mission is. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want to do sporting events or something oh, where they have a paid yeah, they, uh, you know, they have administrator money or they, something, but yeah. where it's volunteer and they are, in fact, uh, and I know that for a fact, they are helping community folks that need help. So um, before so, I ask for a motion, is any other discussion like that? Emily, Emily uh, covered most everything I had. All right, do I hear a motion to approve this? So moved. All right, do we need a specific uh, well, right. we're just going to approve it well they asked for either a waiver or a reduction and we're going for the waiver right yeah yes mm -hmm. okay okay so we're so, the motion is to, to uh, waive, the fee. waive the fee. waive the fee. waive the fees all right do I hear a second second all in favor aye. aye any further discussion all right they've got it I will make a um, I do not have the contractor just Doing the work, and I think they've all, they've got all the stuff that's donated materials and everything from this building supply and this building supply to get it done. So, um, and, and their food, they, they a, a lot of their food comes from Food mm -hmm. Line oh, and yeah. other places. Sure. I mean, yeah. They do a great job Walmart. in helping um, yeah. folks who definitely need it when they need it. So, mm -hmm. when somebody's hungry, they'll feed them. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So the next item is new business. And it has to do with the request for installation of some drainage improvements in Rabbit Hollow. Um, and I wanted to discuss this a little bit. Willie, uh, give us some heads up on what we're being asked to do. And then I've got some things that I think we want you to do before we approve it. So let's go first with you. First, Mr. Mayor, members of council, we're here to discuss, as you mentioned, the installation of some drainage improvements. Uh, in the Rabbit Hollow area, which is off of Tateway Road. Uh, that would be West Tateway. Uh, this area is prone to flooding uh, because just due to the topo topography of the land, uh, these houses are built at the base of a hill. 
uh, and the roadway is above them, and they're concerned now with rainwater that runs off the roadway and down the driveways. Uh, the three driveways that are affected mainly, uh, a past project installed what we're attempting to install here on the lower end of the property. Two trench drains on those uh, particular properties down there. Um, this particular area was studied uh, in 2012 stormwater study. Uh, the recommendation out of that was a pumping station to control the groundwater, which at an estimated cost of almost a half a million dollars. Um, did not feel that's very practical for what we need and also the maintenance cost and upkeep, plus for the number of citizens that are served uh, is very minimal. Uh, so the plan itself, and I'll get through it here. Uh, we're looking at, in this area, which is the corner, which is below the hill <coughs> that runs down. Uh, installing trench drains across these three driveways <coughs> and a couple of drop inlets, which will hopefully capture the water and move it down to this existing drop inlet at another property. And this should take the water down an existing ditch line to an outfall. Now this won't stop any of the, the complete saturation. If it gets to that, it's not going to do it. But for rain water events, when there's a lot of storm water, it will should capture the majority of it and take it out of the area and keep it from running down the driveways. Uh, and that's it in a nutshell. Uh, I do have to complete this project. I do have bids. And uh, our low bid for this particular project is $24,600. Okay, so the bid came in at twenty four six. Yes, sir. Did you have twenty six here? Yes, sir. All right. Um, I have some things that kind of bother me a little bit. The first thing is <coughs> I personally would not want council to proceed with this without the following items. Written consent from the adjacent property owners. We have one fellow that's doing all the complaining and wanting it done, but it's affecting two other property owners. And back when we were, somebody had made a plan to ditch over on Lindbergh and they put flags out there before we or the neighbors knew it and it created some problems. So if the rest of you agree, I would want us to do that for the record. I also want to know some sort of a engineering that would tell us what will diverting this water do to other property owners. In other words, we're diverting this down and you say it goes to an outfall, but where does it terminate? It's got to terminate somewhere. Uh, All right, so what does that do? What effect does that have? Is it a net effect detrimental to someone else? Um, and the town's legal obligation, if, if there's any to do this work, now that, that subdivision's been there a very long time, and it's been that way, I guess, since it was built. Uh, it is my understanding, actually, Outmar and Associates, the curb and gutters there now with those trench drains came after those places were developed. Okay, all right. That was a privately funded project, or uh, we did it, the town did it, town did it. So this, uh, this is a town road. Yes, sir. Powell Bill can pay for it. Yes, sir. Is there enough money in the Powell Bill to do that, to do this, and continue to do in your overlaying and other yes, sir. There is. You could do that. Yes, sir. Is all, is all of the construction in the right-of-way? It is. And the person that wants this work had some comments. Has he given those to you yet? Uh, he did not give me anything in writing. I, I believe he's spoken with you, and he told me the same thing. The, wa the water is going down his driveway, and his issue is he has the only driveway that is concrete all the way down to his house. The other driveways are broken. They have, uh, they terminate and then go into stone, which they don't have quite the issue he has. But it does roll down and he has a workshop and things like that in the bottom that do get flooded in a heavy storm. All right, here's what I, Council, this is what I'd like to do. Uh, and you folks chime in, all right? I'd like to get written consent before we consider this. What does the water, uh, diverting water do? Um, 
And the person that's asking for work should give us comments because he's asked okay. to be able to comment and he should give us that in writing so we know what we're doing. Anyone else have some comments on this? No, sir. Uh, the, the ones that are <clears throat> actually there right now, are they, are they working satisfactory? Yes, sir. And it's very similar to what we have in Bird Street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I understand that. Yes. But I just don't want us to get in a mess with the neighbors and somebody down the street at the end of the ditch that we don't know. What, what's that going to do down there? Yes. Uh, let's, let's keep it honest now, and legal and now, keep uh, us out of trouble. <laughs> now, in the, in the case of the guy that's wanting all this, uh, he, uh, it's not because he believes that the work that was done previously by the town is causing his problem, right? I mean, he was getting flooded before that was done. Well, he, he bought this house after that Oh, was after that, that was done. Okay. Effect. All right. It, was, it probably was never done correctly when it was subdivided and built. Yeah. Then the town came in, I think, to alleviate the problem, but it's insufficient to well, his... I'm surprised it didn't go on up the hill. Why yeah. did it carry on yeah. up the hill? I, I don't know. Um, be that as it may, it's a town road. If it's a problem, we'll try to fix it, but let's get our ducks in a row. Once we get that, bring it back to us, and uh, then we can decide. Everybody in agreement with that? I'm fine with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Steve, do we need a motion in this? Wait. Uh, no, this is just new business. You, you, you can just postpone it to bring it back at a later meeting. Okay. So we have a consensus for that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're down to reports. From the town manager already. <laughs> well, we have a public comment after we finish here. Okay. It it can be about anything. It can be about anything. Public comment. Yeah, sure. I didn't hear what she said. All right. Uh, For a short meeting, we're sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not do this anymore. All right, go ahead. All right, Mr. Mayor, uh, just to bring everybody up to s speed on what's going on with coastal planning and engineering. Uh, during the month of July, coastal plan engineer continued to coordinate with North Carolina Division of Coastal Management regarding the major camera permit application. Uh, CPNE was notified on September 3rd that the application was complete. Uh, CP and E worked on finalizing the engineering report during the month of July, and uh, the engineering and beach profile survey reports were finalized in August, and those were delivered to the TAM. The marine sand search and bar area design report was completed in June and was submitted to North Carolina DCM for approval. Uh, however, in North Carolina DCM required CP and E to collect additional beach samples, which was done in August and the report was resubmitted to as a part of the camera major permit application. Uh, that's just, uh, that's report from uh, Coastal Planning. Uh, also wanted to mention that uh, on our easement agreements, uh, as of this date, we've received 182 of the 275 easement agreements, which is 66% uh, of the total, and uh, we uh, will be sending out reminder letters uh, this week to those property owners who have not returned their agreements to remind them uh, to get those agreements back to us uh, so that we can uh, move, be ready to uh, move forward with the beach nourishment project. Um, another item is uh, the new owners of the Overton property uh, came to town hall and they discussed their demo work with uh, Donna and Dennis in the planning department. Uh, their contractor is expected to come by town hall this week to pull the permit for demolition. So that's moving forward also. Um, also just wanted to mention that, uh, of course, so we had a pretty busy weekend, uh, that our police department, fire department, and public works were busy pretty much the whole weekend uh, monitoring the overwash from the Hurricane Aquin. Uh, and as most people know, the section of NC-12 at Kitty Hawk Road did not survive, and the section between Kitty Hawk Road and Lillian Street 
is now closed until NCDOT can repair the road. Uh, NCDOT plans to extend the sandbags all the way down to the bathhouse. Um, it, uh, I contacted the NCDOT today, uh, but, uh, and they told me it was too early for them to give me a time frame, uh, but we should know by the next council meeting uh, what their schedule is for the repairs. Uh, we did uh, experience some overwash on other section of NC-12 that, that did create some flooding, uh, minor flooding along <coughs> NC-12, and then uh, Bird Street and Hawk Street also had some uh, minor flooding. So uh, just wanted to compliment all the departments who were involved in the work that they did. Uh, also we want to mention uh, uh, we will be having uh, free flu shots uh, this coming Thursday here at Town Hall from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, anyone 18 years and older can come to Town Hall at that time for a free flu shot. So it's open to everyone, Ex over 18, that is. Um, and one other thing, just a final item, uh, at the fire department, they will be having their annual uh, open house will be held this Wednesday from 5.30 p.m. to 8 o'clock p.m. And that's all I have this evening, Mr. Mayor. Um, <clears throat> you said they were going to carry the sandbags all the way to the bathhouse, but how about how far north? Did they say how far north they'd go? Uh, he, didn't, he didn't indicate, uh, yeah, if they're extending them any further north than they are now. So we can find out. Well, that's where, that's where it breaks <laughs> the problem. But that doesn't make any sense. Huh? That doesn't make any sense because well, that's where the, the damage. Well, all right. Well, I know, I know, but he. he no, I, I hope he's going all the way to Pelicans yeah. first, but we'll see where it is. All right. Um, on the uh, easement agreements, uh, the letters you're sending out uh, are generic in the sense that we sent you this, and we're going. We're not talking anything more drastic than. No, 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 no. A reminder. No, no. Okay. No. I want to make sure we don't go there. No, no, At least not yet. No, um, <laughs> I've been counseled by that. Yeah, okay. That. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make sure we stay away from that, at least for the time being. Yes, sir. Um, the other thing, and I want council to know this, as you know, an easement person is going to refuse to sign an easement. Let me, the mayor, know so that I can call them personally. All right. And talk with them one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And right. as you know that, if you know somebody now, give me that number as soon as you have it so I can right. start making some phone calls. Okay. I want to find out why they're opposed to that. Um, okay. That's all I have. Mr. Attorney. I don't have anything else for you tonight. Very good. Thank you. Council. Yeah. Uh, nothing for me. Jeff. Uh, I also would like to thank um, the police department, fire and public works, uh, and all the great job and all the extra hours. Thank you guys. I mean, I really appreciate it. I hope you got the sand off of you, but that was a long weekend. <laughs> That's all. Same here. Uh, I think a lot of people here, we were checking out the, our beach and our road yesterday afternoon about 1 o'clock, and I happened to be turning that black pelican and the uh, Two police officers, Sergeant Wiggins and Officer Watts, Chief, were, were pulling the police car across the road to block traffic. They were attempting, they were wrestling with the yellow caution tape. With the <laughs> uh, police, fire, public works, time manager, the staff here that a lot of times behind the scenes we don't see what they do. Uh, people sometimes want to complain and not look at the good things that you do. I've been on that side and I've wrestled with that caution tape myself a few years in the past. I know what you do and I want to say I thank you very much for what y'all have done. It looks like you got some more work in the next few days, but, but I appreciate what you do. That's all. Irvin? Same for me. I mean, everybody did a great job. Yeah, yeah I want to do over here. <laughs> I live on the beach. I, I'm, I, I hope I hope that I don't come didn't come across as taking it for granted because I don't I, I know that you're out there and I see you doing your thing and I know it's weekends and you're sacrificing your own time and anyway uh, uh, <coughs> thanks a million and I'm not going to be here much longer but I want you to know that I'll be one of those people out in the city, in the group of citizens we have here in Kitty Hawk who are appreciating you all the time. 
Well, you certainly uh, were well prepared. This could have been a bad situation. Uh, it certainly looked like it was going to be one. And uh, you did everything that uh, council and citizens could have asked of you. Uh, we, we do appreciate it. Uh, we had pumps ready. We were kind of hoping we might get a chance to use one of those standpipes just to see if it worked. <laughs> but, uh, and Willie was chomping. He really wanted to do that. But <laughs> we didn't want to usurp a, a time when we needed a permit and kind of mess up. So mm -hmm. we didn't do that. But anyway, everything was prepared. We were ready for it, as ready as you can get. So we do appreciate it. Um, and I would like for the public to understand that there's an election around the corner. Uh, we're hearing nothing, very few signs and, and less chatter. We also have uh, the League of Women's Voters Forum this coming Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, we have three candidates uh, registered, and it uh, be good to hear from them, see what happens. All right? I don't have anything else. Now we're in public comment. If you would like to come up and speak. My name is Nellie Healy, and I'm the owner of 824, 826, and 828 Kitty Hawk Road, uh, along with my husband, the old Oaksmith property, and um, have spent the last several years renovating those properties and getting them up to snuff, so to speak. Uh, finally, as a result of Irene, the largest house, which is 828, was turned on its side and had to be raised, and that, was, that work was finally completed. All the other houses had damage from the flood. And the reason I'm here today is because um, I abut the con that property abuts that canal, and that canal is clogged, seriously clogged. And I was hoping to um, get some assistance in how to go about getting that canal cleaned up. It's um, the interesting thing about that property. I actually don't own to the property line where the canal is, but it's right there. So the other property on the other side of A28 owns the canal and a little tiny piece, tiny, tiny sliver of the property where 828 is. So um, I know it's a DOT responsibility, but the roadway runs over there and there's a, cul you know, a culvert there and that's totally clogged. And I think that had a tremendous amount of impact on the fact when Irene came and the waters came up that the house got totally, the 828 got twisted and the other houses were damaged along with everything else. So, uh, as you well know, it takes about two floodings to get a house raised or unless, you know, the percentage of the destruction is high enough. Anyway, we went through the whole process and it's been four years to get all those three properties straightened out, culminating with the largest one, which was the one that had to be raised. So I kind of feel that that whole side is in danger and if something can be done to clean those canals and, um, I don't know, maybe rock put against them or whatever needs to be done. I'd like to work on that project along with whoever in the town you assign me to and to see it through to its fruition. Whether we can do it as a community service project, uh, involve the Department of Transportation, whoever needs to, whatever players need to be contacted. I know it's not a short-term project, but I certainly feel that um, we're all of us who live in Kitty Park with those canals over the years having gotten all clogged up all along the line. I don't even know how long the clogs go, you know, the uh, go. Certainly it's affecting my properties there and the others that are on that side. Um, that particular culvert that you're talking about and, it's, and some others uh, have in fact been reported to the Department of Transportation. Um, and they've, uh, they've actually looked at them. I know, Willie, they looked at the one on Sandy Run, right? 
And do you know if they looked at this particular one that she's talking about? I do not. Okay, would you check on that, please? All right, I, I just need an update to, to know where, if they looked at it, when did they look at it, and what is their plans? Of course, they've got a, they got a lot on their plate, all right? Uh, they're trying to fix roads here, down in Buxton, and as well as the rest of North Carolina. Um, and they also have to get permits. It's not easy for them to even change or replace a culvert. So it's, it's a cumbersome project just <coughs> to clean something like that out or replace the culvert, that sort of thing. But I, I need to know where they're at, and uh, Willie can check on that. We'll find out what's going on there. Now, you had looked at something. Uh, I did, and um, I called Rob last week, whatever, and he's checking into the hook and snag money, mos mos mosquito control stuff. And I, you haven't got an answer back yet? No. Okay. Okay. What we're trying to do, there's a, product called, a process called hook and snag and where they clean the centers of the ditches and they tie the, the trees that have fallen down back on the sides and so forth. And he's checking on that now, see if there's any monies out there. That was done several years ago under a, a yeah. program, but that program is no longer uh, viable. It's extinct. So you, you got to find a... a some money to do things like that. The town, I'll tell you right now, the town does not have the money to go clean all the ditches that we've had a request to clean. They're too long, or, or, there's just too many of them. Uh, you wouldn't like the tax rate we'd have to give you for that. So if we don't find other sources of money, then it makes it very difficult to get it done. Well, that, that's why I'm here, because I, I, I acknowledge that, realize that. Okay. It becomes maybe the citizen's job to work in Junction with the town to research that and see where we can find more money. You know how they say the squeaky wheel gets the <coughs> oil. Well, if you find us money, let us know. <laughs> we'll spend it. What I'm saying is there someone I should be working with in the town who I could at least get a starting point of, in, in terms of direction in which way I need to go. Let's see what Rob comes up with because he's trying to research it and find if there's any monies out there. Let's see what he comes up with first and we'll. Okay. He's with the town. He's their planner. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank All right. you. All right. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Bob. I just had a few thoughts that I'd like to follow up. <coughs> situation there isn't as bad as it is near the culvert that we were talking about, but just uh, some thoughts that I wanted to bring up, just in the overall, maybe a, a different way of looking at some of these problems, because we have basically uh, a water flow problem because of all these creeks, culverts, everything loading up with debris. And um, cleaning it up, I would think, could come under the auspices of uh, flood mitigation. Because if you don't have flow, uh, you're going to have a much increased chance of flooding. And I think maybe with this storm, we dodged the bullet. But if we have a, another storm, uh, like Irene or like an Isabel coming up the sounds, the situation on the west side could be pretty rough. And I'm just wondering if, as a town, uh, we could go to other agencies, like FEMA or whoever, and uh, explore possibilities for funding under the banner of flood mitigation. It's a question to you, because I don't have that answer. But um, it seems to me something that would make sense, and something that potentially, down the line, could save thousands, if not millions of dollars. Uh, that's pretty much all I have to say. 
All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let the record show no one else came forward. Do we hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Mayor Tackett. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.